1980, I was a small-scale farmer in Eugene, Oregon. We were on a 15-acre farm, which at that point was the largest organic um, farm in the state of Oregon, producing produce. I was spending about 25% of my time marketing and telling other people how to farm before I left the farm to go market, collect money, sell things, all that stuff. And us and a lot of other small-scale growers were beating the absolute crap out of each other, attempting to sell to the same small stores. So we decided to cooperate, and we formed an agricultural marketing cooperative, which operates along similar lines to Blue Diamond or Sunkist or Ocean Spray or any of those kind of outfits. And one of the things that happened in our co-op that was unique to a lot of them was that the first employees were all growers who had put the um, co-op together, including myself. I ended up going from being a bad marketer and attempting to farm to giving up farming and becoming a good marketer. So um, it, was a, it was a bizarre twist of fate that took me there. But, but one of the things that happened as a result of that was there were bonds between the staff of OGC and the growers that were very different than would have occurred if OGC had simply hired people from the outside to come in and run the organization. And um, I think that that's one of the reasons that our organization has ended up becoming what it became. Um, right off the bat, the USDA informed us that we are not a legal ag marketing co-op because we were a wholesaler and the majority of our sales were not coming from our members. And they said, at some point, you're going to have to switch this thing. So a few years down the road, the growers started looking at how they could bring staff in as owners and change to a different um, you know, structure. And the, the bear of the thing was to figure out, you know, how do you bring apples and oranges into this deal and create, you know, fairness in terms of who owns what. We could find, we found one model in the entire United States, which was up in Alaska, and it was fishers and the people who worked in the cannery had managed to create a business together. And we looked at their deal and it didn't quite work for us, and we ended up becoming an S corporation. And that allowed us to bring in, uh, at that point, up to 75 shareholders. Um, a lot of those were growers. There's about 23 growers that own shares in our business now, and then part of them are staff. And then eventually, we decided to form a, an ESOP. So we now have an ESOP that sits inside of the S Corporation. And so to imagine this deal, you've got about uh, 43, we've got 160 employees, about 20, 20 plus of those are uh, shareholders outside of the ESOP. 130 of those are owners inside of the ESOP. So I own shares both inside of the ESOP and I own shares outside of the ESOP with the grower, with the grower group. So we've got about 43 or 45 people who own, at this point, 83% of the business and the ESOP is in the purchase of buying 17% of the business and turning that over to the 130 um, employees. And over time, our goal is to um, ha have the ESOP buy about 50% of the shares among, uh, among that group in terms of the employees who get it that way, and the other half of the business will continue to be owned by growers. We continue to bring in growers as shareholders. Um, we brought in a handful of them since we became an S-Corp, and uh, we want growers to be owners of our business. We do not want it to be simply owned by um, people who are not involved in agriculture. We have a board of directors that sits um, external people who come in with expertise, but it has a minimum of two growers on our board of directors at all times, and it has a minimum of at least two staff on our board at all times. We call it a three-legged stool. So we really, we really try and push ownership on a lot of different levels um, within our business structure and our activities. So I asked my HR director to give me um, kind of a clue as to what to cover today. So some of this, I will just read what she wrote for me and then some of it we can go into either now or later. A fair and positive work, uh, working environment starts with some foundation things that need to be in place. Culture, the collection of values, beliefs, symbols, and norms that the employer business follows that defines what it is and how it does business each and every day. Does my employer walk to talk about commitments and values consistently? Do they treat people fairly, honestly, and with respect? Is there a handbook that helps me understand why this who this employer is, what it stands for, and what its policies are? At OGC, we have a mission and credo statement that is kept active and communicated on employees. We have a handbook that is revised every year and employees sign that they have read and understood the policies. We invest time, money, and resources in organics and sustainable business practices. We implemented our ESOP and we've got 130 people in it. Our turnover rate over the last two years combined was 13%. And eliminating turnover rate is one of our big goals because in produce, it takes a full year to even understand a business cycle. Um, the peak season comes and it goes, and if you missed it, it's 12 months before you get in on the beginning of it again. 
So for us, it is critical to have employees that stay years and years and years. You know, it's, it's devastating to us to have a buyer leave after 10 years. They're just barely figuring out what the hell they're doing at 10 years. Um, warehousers, you know, we value warehouses. We need people who are willing to be warehousers for five years, 10 years, not just, okay, I'm going to come in here and have a job. When I was a kid, I worked, you know, warehouse jobs for three months and blew out. We cannot have that happen. Um, we lose so much of our training opportunity in it. Clear job expectations. What is my job? How am I doing performing my job? Does my supervisor care about me and how, about how I'm doing on my job? OGC has clear job different profiles with defined outcomes and uh, competencies required. We have a very well coordinated annual performance evaluation process for every employee with clear goals outlined for the coming year. I just spent, um, I just did my 17, um, the people uh, I supervised marketing people and the salespeople, there's 17 of them. It was about four hours per person to go through their evaluations. It's just completely dominated my last couple of weeks to, to do that. Clearly understood pay system. Why do I get paid what I get paid? Is there a fair and rational method of determining my pay that is based on some objective criteria? We have market pay, pay groups that are communicated to every employee and that are posted internally on every job posting. We have a process for employees to challenge their pay group and have it reviewed for accuracy. And we have changed pay groups in the past as a result of people's challenges. Clear path, paths to success. How is my performance measured? What constitutes above average performance? Will I be respected, acknowledged, and compensated well if I perform above average? We have a consistent process for measuring performance and receiving merit increases. We pay within job pay, uh, job pay grade quartiles based on performance. We have career paths lined out for many of our job families. So for instance, if you come into the business, almost all of, the vast majority of our people uh, were promoted within rather than hired from without. Um, one of the biggest keys to being an account rep at OGC is to know the product line and the way you know the product line is you work in the warehouse. So we have like, what I've got is I've got account rep one, two, and three, and they're very well defined in terms of what, how long you have to have been in the trade, what you have to have accomplished in terms of knowledge of the produce line, as well as OGC to go from one to two to three. And pay goes with that. Tools, systems, procedures, and processes. Do I have what I need to do my job well? Does my super, supervisor help remove obstacles that get in the way of me doing my job well? Does someone respond to my requests, concerns, and ideas about improvements in systems, procedures, and processes? OGC has annual planning summits in each functional area where employees are invited to share problems, concerns, to target for improvement. And we have active continuous improvement teams working on various project ideas that have been submitted by fellow employees continu continuously throughout the year. Additional aspects of creating a fair and positive workplace include continuous learning and training. Does my employer want to help me improve myself and meet my own dreams and career aspirations? We offer education assistance through tuition reimbursement. We sponsor several uh, on-site educational programs each year for using Produce Pro, which is our software, um, to leadership development. In 2009, we offered 12 different training and education programs facilitated by outside professionals. Also, many hours of job-related training programs like safety, forklift, new hire, et cetera. We have applied for and received over $100,000 in Oregon State training grant funds over the last few years. 70% of our job openings are filled internally. We also do a lot of stuff where, um, like in marketing, we have a track that's laid out through 2015 of every employee, every event they're gonna get to. Every employee knows when they're gonna come to a Silmar. They know when they're gonna go to the PMA conference. They know when they're gonna go to the Washington Tilt conference, the whole deal. Um, we work with Oregon Tilt at their farm, Lucier Farm, and every year we have on-site trainings where people go out to the farm and learn aspects of organic farming and organic gardening and receive certificates for that kind of work. Two-way communication. Am I respected enough to be regularly informed about what, what's going on in the company and with the business? Am I regularly asked for my opinion about how things are going? Do I have easy access to approach and talk to people at any level within the organization? OGC tracks a dashboard of key performance indicators for the company and shares that information consistently with employees. We have quarterly all-staff meetings. We used to have them every two months before the economy went in the shitter. Um, Shareholder banquet, March 2010, we're going to have a banquet where we bring in all of our staff, all of our growers. We used to do it when we were smaller. Now we're in three locations and we got 160 employees, uh, you know, 25 owners that are growers. And we're with about 300 growers. So pulling together a banquet like that's quite a task. 
But we're gonna do things like one of the things we're gonna do is we're literally gonna have a scroll down of every employee who ever worked at OGC, hopefully, with the ones that are still there highlighted where people can really see the development of the company which started with one employee and, and through just shaving off tasks has grown to the size it is now. Um, departments have weekly staff meetings. All employees have access to email, either Outlook or Produce Pro. We also actively use bulletin boards, notices attached to payroll, etc. cetera. Um, there's an HR report that goes out every week to all employees that notes birthdays, uh, job openings, who filled jobs, how long people have been with the company, um, has sustainability tips, stuff like that. Um, employee involvement, how do I get to be involved in important things that affect me? We have annual employee survey. We follow up with specific management action plans to address issues. Results are communicated to all employees. OGHC also has following, uh, the following active programs and employee commitments that are given authority, budget support, and reinforcement from management. We have a brand new health and wellness program committee. Um, just getting going, gonna have quarterly drawings for setting and working toward individual health goals. We just kicked off a program that we're calling SHINE, which stands for Spirit Health, Intention, Nutrition, and Energy. Continuous improvement teams, weekly CI meetings with progress on goals posted on bulletin boards. Safety committee, the safety committee uh, puts out newsletters to all the staff uh, uh, regarding their meetings and improvements or fixes they've got. We have an annual award for safe work practices. We have an ESOP advisory and communications committee, quarterly ESOP educational uh, sessions for all employees. We, got, our, we work with Social K for our 401k and uh, Scott uh, Pope is the guy that we work with and he comes in um, on our 401k at least and, and meets with people and goes through you know, exactly where your 401k is at, gives you advice on that as well. Uh, Smart Commute Program Committee, quarterly drawings for prizes for those who use alternative forms of transportation. When Natalie, our sustainability coordinator, what was the, what was the uh, percentage of food miles that we drove to work versus that our trucks drove produce? Significant. So we're trying to pull that down. Um, charitable contributions committee. We make decisions about OGC charitable contribution ideas based um, that come from employees. And uh, when we were a young business, the way we got our funding was the two co-ops, natural food co-ops had gone out of business in Eugene and instead of selling off their assets, they combined it and created a fund called the West End Fund. And that fund could only be loaned to co-ops involved in creation of natural, manufacture of natural food, which was us, 2% interest, which at that point was a scream. And so when we went from being a co-op to becoming an S-Corp, one of the things we said to the growers was, this, was, this business was basically birthed by the community and we, we've got to get back to the community. So every year we set a goal, which is about 2% of our net profit, and this committee go, turns around, it's almost all spent on, um, a lot of it's environmental stuff, a lot of it's ag stuff. You know, we've got a fairly narrow track in terms of what we support, but we really try and give support back to the community and the organizations in it. Um, we've got a trustee committee for the 401k I mentioned. Um, we interview and selection teams for new hires that involve lots of people. And starting in 2010, we will add a benefits committee that will look at um, our various benefits, especially health ones, and will uh, give management advice on those kind of things. And that is that. Thank you.